How's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 23. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to work with pseudo elements in HTML. So in the previous tutorial, we looked at pseudo classes, uh, which are very similar. Uh, and in fact, a lot of people might think pseudo elements are exactly the same thing, uh, because they kind of are, uh, except a pseudo class is kind of a class that doesn't exist, whereas a pseudo element is more of an element than it is uh, just a specific class, right? So let's create a paragraph and I'm going to put some lorem ipsum in here. So I'm going to type and lorem and then I'm going to hit tab. And uh, if you're using sublime, this should happen. It should uh, add in a full paragraph of lorem ipsum, right? Uh, if it doesn't work, try Googling it. Maybe it is different on Windows than Mac, All right? So here we have a uh, paragraph. And uh, what I want to do now is style this. So let's take a look at this in the browser real quick. And it is, you know, quite a long paragraph. I'm just going to zoom in to make that a little bit more clear. And uh, let's style our paragraph. But I'm going to style a pseudo element in this paragraph. So I'm going to select the first letter. Uh, so that is uh, an element. If you think about it, this letter, it exists, it's there on the screen. Um, and I can select it as a letter or tr and but treat it as an element. Therefore, um, that's why we say it is a pseudo element and not a, a class, right. And uh, I'm going to give this a font size of 200%, which will make it twice as big as the uh, other text in the paragraph. And then I'm also going to change the color to blue, or whatever color you want to do. Let's hit refresh. And now you can see we've got this really big L, it's, you know, it's twice the size of every uh, or all, all the other text on the page. And it's also blue. Uh, so we can treat this first letter as if it were an element, right, we can also do the same thing with the first line of this paragraph. So let's come back here and hit refresh. And uh, now it selects the entire first line and it uh, applies the same styling. So we've got the font size and the, the color changing there. A uh, nice thing about that is it will automatically detect how long the line is and just make that first line um, uh, or apply that styling to the first line, right. So if I zoom out a little bit, um, you can see the line got longer. And so all of that text also changed to blue as well. If I zoom in, the line gets a little bit shorter and uh, all of that text then changes and then the text that moved out to the new line, uh, you know, uh, loses that styling. Right. So there we go. We've done that. Now let's take a look at um, the next selector I want to show you guys, uh, which is before and after. So let's go for before. And uh, I'll just remove that styling. But what the before element allows us to do is add some text before our paragraph. So let me go ahead and just remove everything except maybe this first uh, sentence. So the paragraphs a lot shorter to work with. Um, and now we have this this paragraph here. Uh, but I want to add some text before or something before it, right, then I can use uh, the paragraph selector, select the before element, and then add in uh, some styling. So I'm going to add in content. Um, and I'm going to add maybe just uh, the word some or something. Right. And that allows us to add content before our text, but this has been put in with CSS. So you'll notice that I can select normal text like this. But if I try to select the something, I can't select it. It's it's been put in there with CSS, it's almost treated as if it were an image or something rather than text. Um, uh, so this can be used if you ever want to put a little bit of content in before a paragraph. And you can do the same thing for after so you can put the text in after a paragraph. And now we have something at the end of the paragraph. Um, but uh, I think for the most part, people generally put in 
like a full stop and then they usually use this to clear whenever we do float and clear which we'll probably do in a previous tutorial or in a future tutorial not a previous tutorial <laughs> um, and uh, it is also useful for sometimes uh, putting in icons so uh, let me just say before and uh, I'll I'll just use this for now seeing as we're not linking to any icons uh, but you'll see I get to put this little hash symbol in, uh, or not hash, but what is this thing called? A dash <laughs> uh, before the paragraph. Uh, and if I have obviously a few paragraphs, then they all get that dash. Uh, save, come back here, refresh. So they all get that little dash before them and they almost look like a little bit of a list. Um, and uh, in future, when I show you guys how to add your own custom fonts and things like that, to uh, your HTML document. You can add in your own icon over here and uh, then that icon will appear before the text as well. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design and web development and they'll teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field and they'll do it within 12 weeks. So check out their website, the link is in the description below. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Special thanks to the guys whose names are on screen now. These guys contribute $5 or more on Patreon and I really appreciate that. Uh, while you're still here, there are a few other things that you can do to help out. So follow me on social media and check out some more of my content and I'll see you guys next time.